welcome, Mohsin. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you. What what an introduction. I hope I live up to it. So happy Pride, everybody. And uh, as as has been touched upon, I I like to the things I care about are, are class and faith and race and intersectionality. But uh, I hope you'll forgive me because because it's Pride Month. I'm going to talk about an experience that's to do with my sexuality. But I'm not going to give you an overview. Instead, I'm going to kind of go in on just one particular story. And that is the story of probably the most embarrassing moment of my life. Um, so uh, as was mentioned, I am a, a lawyer and the Supreme Court sits at the top of the British judicial hierarchy. So that's the top court in the land. And in fact, it's probably one of the top courts in the world because of um, the Commonwealth, because it, it's the court, top court for some countries around the world as well. And the Supreme Court has 12 judges in it. And every year there's a competition to find 12 new young lawyers to be assigned to each of these judges to help them with all of the legal work. And one year, a few years ago, I was successful and I was totally chuffed to bits. And I remember my first day, I, was, uh, I walked into Lord Nicholas Wilson's office and he looked onto Parliament Square. So from his office, you could see Big Ben, you could see the Houses of Parliament, you could see the Treasury, and you could see Westminster, uh, Westminster Cathedral. Um, and I was so nervous because I thought to myself, this, I, I'm, I'm working with the person who's at the top of their game in my profession. So the only equivalent I can give you is, if you're a singer, it would be like interning with Beyonce. Like, this is how great it was. And he said to me, Mohsin, it's a really real pleasure to meet you. And the first thing I'd like your help with is a speech that I'm going to be giving in Northern Ireland on marriage. And at the time, marriage was, same sex marriage was unlawful in Northern Ireland. And when he said that to me, I froze because I thought, oh my God, this really posh, very traditional, old, and I'm gonna be honest, white man is telling me that he wants to do a speech on marriage and my job is to help him, but I don't want to. So he starts talking and as he's telling me what he intends to put in his speech, I realize that quite, quite apart from wanting to talk about the, how traditional marriage is, Lord Wilson wants to do the opposite. What he wants to do is talk about how marriage is a man-made concept. And so as a man-made concept or a person-made concept, it's elastic, so we can do with it what we like. Essentially, his point was, we should let same-sex couples get married because we invented marriage. And for me, that was lesson number one. I had looked at him and made a judgment. I would looked at the color of his skin. I would looked at, I would listened to the sound of his voice. I would looked at his surroundings. And I thought about what he would, what he would, he was going to say to me. I, I, there were misconceptions. And the thing about it was that this is what people did to me. And I hated it when people did to me. And here I was doing it to somebody else. And I learned a lesson in that. But I told you that this was a story about the most embarrassing moment of my life. And so I should come on to it. Now, we got working on the speech. And during the, during the work, I realized that Lord Wilson didn't really like technology. So he would have his secretary print out his emails and he would write a reply and then she would send it off for him. And I remember saying to him, I was like, look, you're a like, Supreme Court judge, like you need to join the 21st century. Um, and he complained about the technology. And so I had recently bought an iPad and I lent it to him. And I said, look, these are really easy to use. I gave it to him on a Friday and I said, just take it for a couple of weeks. And on the Monday, so two days later, he came back to me and he said, here's your iPad, I bought my own. And I was really surprised, but you know, thought great. And so then we spent a lot of time working on this speech and the speech was a fantastic success. He flew over to Northern Ireland. Um, the speech made headlines because it was a judge telling all of these lawyers in um, a part of Northern Ireland that didn't have same-sex marriage, that they should have same-sex marriage. And you had the Daily Mail and the Telegraph and other newspapers talking about the speech. And, it was incredible. And I was so excited for him to get back. So he flew back and I went into his office and, and I, said to, I said to him, Lord Wilson, that was so cool. I'm so pleased I got to work on it. And he thanked me. And I said, well, actually, 
you don't have to thank me because not only was it a professional privilege, but also a personal one because I'm gay. And I was a bit scared about telling him, but I knew that I had to be honest with him at that point. And I didn't want to do it beforehand because I worried it would pollute our relationship somehow. And his response was to say, Mosin, I, uh, I hope you don't mind my saying, but I already know. And I kind of paused and thought, okay. Uh, and he said, oh, not because I could tell, although it'd be fine if I could tell, but because, do you remember when you lent me your iPad? And I kind of thought about it and said, yeah, yeah, I do. And he said, well, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but your iPad syncs with your iPhone. And over that weekend, you were getting some rather colorful text messages from a young man named Alejandro. This was the single most embarrassing moment of my life. I was totally lost for words. I was more than lost for words. I wanted the ground to swallow me up and I excused myself and he tried to stop me, but I, I just rushed out of the room as quickly as I could. And I was too afraid to go to my desk because my colleagues were gonna be there. And so I sat in this toilet cubicle thinking about my now ruined career. I had made a fool of myself in front of one of the top judges in the country, if not the world. I worried about what a laughing stock I was gonna be amongst the legal profession. And I sat rocking side to side in that cubicle for a good 10 minutes. And I thought, who can I call? I can't call my parents because I can't tell them about Alejandro. I can't call my friends because they will laugh. And I can't call my legal colleagues because they'll be mortified the same way I am. In fact, the only person I thought about calling was Alejandro, but for reasons that I won't go into today, I didn't call him either. Coming out is petrifying. It's a really scary thing to have to do, particularly when you're younger. And I had always been in control of when I did it. And now I'd lost that control. And not only had I lost that control, but I'd lost that control with in a situation where it really mattered with somebody who I really respected. And I was so, so embarrassed and I couldn't see a way forward, but I knew that I had to get up and go back into that office. And so that's what I did after 10 minutes in that toilet cubicle. And I went in and started to apologize. And he said, I don't want you to apologize, come and sit down. And I sat down and before I could say anything, he said, I want to tell you three things. Number one, Mosin, you have nothing to be embarrassed about. I want to know more about Alejandro. Please leave out all of the details because I have enough context from those text messages that I can fill in the blanks, but please tell me more. Number two, he told me that he loved working with me. And number three, he thought that I was an excellent lawyer and the other judges in the court agreed that I was an asset to the court. It was the most embarrassing moment of my life. And it's also the most powerful example of allyship I could ever, ever give you. In this humiliation, in this deep humiliation that I felt, I felt acceptance. I felt like it was nothing short of transformative because if I could be myself in front of one of the top judges in the country, then there's a lesson in that for me. And I think it's a lesson that applies more broadly. If I could be myself with this amazing judge, then I could be myself at the law firm that I was at. I could be myself at the, the chambers, the barristers chambers I was going to. I could be myself with my clients and in front of other judges, lower down in the chain when I was in court. Because if one of the top judges in the world can see my naughty messages and still think that I belong, then so can everyone else. Now, before I end, I should reiterate, don't get me wrong. I am not suggesting for a moment that you share your naughty messages with your boss because that will not go well and that is entirely inappropriate. But this story I've shared with you because for me, this is allyship. It came from a moment that I lost control. It came from, as I've said before, the most embarrassing moment of my life. And from it, I realized that I didn't need to be in control of coming out anymore. I was so far out of the closet that, that it didn't matter. That it meant ultimately 
that I could just be me. Thanks for listening to me speak today. <laughs>